Hello, welcome back. Um, this is Raul Balumad Tabaranza YouTube, and today we have another topic to. I have another topic to share with you. Uh, so again, I would like to invite you to just please like and subscribe. Uh, I would like to to talk of a conversation with a priest. No, because first of all, he asked me about my vocation and how, oh, and up to now, I said, why am I still a priest right now? And what do, what would you have been if, if you were not a priest? So I really thought about this question a lot at that time. In fact, I went to the chapel and sat down and thought about it after day minute after minute after minute no uh at, i was at the height of my career in the bank i've i work at far east bank and <clears throat> trust company now which is called the bank of the philippine islands and uh, i i it was there that i read the magazine of the the world mission magazine of the Kumboni missionaries i have read it and discovered the happy difficult dangerous lives of many missionaries especially in africa and the latin americas and many parts of the world and i said this is the life that i want to be and i thought that i was just i mean i was not really that ser serious at that time uh, I was just attracted, so I, I wrote in order to subscribe the magazine, but then it became a start of a conversation of an exchange of letter with the vocation director of the Comboni, Philipp of Comboni Missionaries in the Philippines. And the rest is history. I responded to the call and have been with the Comboni Missionaries for 26 years now. But I guess it was not just because of the magazine no there was a vocation something hidden in my heart maybe i did not acknowledge it and mostly because i love my work outside i love my life outside uh, i was very sociable a happy person so i did not recognize that inner calling you know, that inner calling not to become a missionary or to become a priest. So I was just there, just there. And when I worked, I was there with my family and I was helping helping somehow with my, my family. And then until my mother became very sick and everything changes little by little, changed little by little, not without me knowing. My vocation probably was an influence. You no know, influence since I was very, very young. You no, know, since I we had an uncle, uh, Monsignor Artemio Baluma, you no, know, the ma the brother of my mother, you no, know, who was very much kind of influential in, in influential in our family, and I also have a priest brother, you no, know, Monsignor Atilano Tabaranza. No, so I was very used to be surrounded with priests. Nobody was working in the bank. I was surrounded with priests every single day. And every single day I go and attend Mass at Carmelites Missionaries. I was with the Sisters of St. Joseph. The priest will come and collect me for Mass in, in the monastery. So all these influences from my family uh, members and also the priests and sisters around, I think they helped me, helped me you know, develop that kind of vocation. So every day I was in the church. I was before the Blessed Sacrament, before work, and after my work I go to Mass. In the afternoon I visit the church. Uh, I was a youth leader in the diocese, uh, a volunteer of the youth. I was, the, I was a leader of the Singles for Christ. So all this formed me to become a missionary, you know, that I am now. So I would like to deal this question of the priest to me. 
Why am I still a priest? Difficult question. Uh, I, in fact, I said, oh my goodness, what a difficult question to answer. The first, I don't find myself anymore like a working person in an office or in a company. Really, I don't, I don't see that, I don't see myself that one anymore. I don't see myself being a career person anymore. Secondly, I love my life now. I love my my way of living. I, and I cannot picture myself not being a missionary priest. I cannot anymore. Thirdly, I am happy with the simplicity of my life among the poorest of the poor and the mission. I have found meaning in my life. And lastly, I am still a priest now because God wants it. I am not in control of my life anymore. He owns my life. So I am still a priest. This is what God wants me to be. I am just his collaborator. Then the retreat master made a follow-up question. That priest made, up, made a follow-up question to me. If you were not a priest, what profession would you have? And I thought again about this question. If I am not a priest, what profession would I have? I have both my college degree and my master in business administration. I can find a work, maybe. I have you know, more than enough knowledge or oh, uh, units in education. I can also teach, maybe. I have my degree in philosophy. I have my bachelor in theology. I have my diploma in missiology. I can do something. Maybe I could still work in the bank or teach or to work in another field. Now, teaching is another passion for me. And I believe that teaching is also a vocation. But again, when I learned of God's calling, I never thought any more of another career. No, priesthood is not a career. It's not a career. It's something that I become. No, priesthood is not a career. It is something that I become. God uprooted me from where I was. And he wanted me to be something different according to his desire, not of my desire. God fashioned and refashioned my life many, many times. So to have the career outside is no longer in my mind, frank, frankly speaking. So I do not know why, why I, but I just cannot fathom the the mind of the Lord. Now, wh why did he choose me? Why of all people? So I cannot take all what is the plan of God. I cannot contain his dreams for me. No, God is truly a mystery. So I am just growing every second, every minute, hour and day and week and year. Now that God wants my collaboration as a missionary priest. So this is something that I become, as I have said. Now, priesthood is what I become. So I, I grow with it. I grow with a desire. So it has been, as I've said, 26 years already since I started uh, with the Kumboni missionaries. And along the way, you meet young people uh, taking inspirations from you, you no, know, they tell me they were inspired, they're inspired about my life, and yet everything is in the hands of the Lord. I leave everything in Jesus, for He's the one who shines through me, so I am nothing without Him, you know, and I believe in that one. It is something that uh, I am truly, truly very grateful. 
God chose Abraham. Abraham was there. He 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 sinned before the Lord. He made mistakes before the Lord. And yet God called him. Maybe I am the image of Abraham also. So there in my past there is also the Abraham in me. Moses was a great man who had a big role in the freedom of the Israelites. But Moses was a murderer. And yet the Lord called him even in his old age. The Lord brought him back you know, to his own people for a mission. So there are many great men and women, saints who were naughty and adulterous sinners who squandered riches and yet they became great people. They, they, the, the Lord called them. The, the, the Lord saw of what they could become in the future. And I think that is really very important. The Lord sees what is what I could become in the future. God wanted to show them the new temple. You know, and that is something. I think it's the same, very much the same with me. I, I would say I am not worthy for this. But when Jesus called me, he called me to be, to be his collaborator. And that is why I get also this privilege. You know, it is always a privilege for me. You know, my feeling of unworthiness must not be an obstacle you know, of to see yes to the Lord day after day. So I am just like an empty bottle. Nothing of importance at all. Useless in the eyes of many people. And yet the Lord picked me up, filled me up. So that I could be refreshed, I could be useful, I could enkindle and revive other people. He could just leave me for nothing, you know, but his mind is different. And it is really something that I thank the Lord day after day. Have moment after moment for making me the person I am now. My, my life as a missionary in Africa and any other parts of the world is a call for emptiness. It is a call for humility. God has something again. In the mission, life is not easy. You have to empty yourself and trust in the Lord. Yet I always find myself in great ingratitude. I am always grateful about my life. And I always take this as, as a gift that nothing... Not, not even money could be, could pay. No, that is why I always say to the Lord, I give you back what you have given to me, my precious life. This life is not mine. It is His. So I give back to him the precious thing that he has given to me, my life. Thank you. Please subscribe. Thank you.